It's been over 90 days since I did the last 90 day fiance on cult. People have been asking for a sequel for a long time and they wondered, Leo, why didn't you do it? Well, I'll tell you why. Maybe it's because I was jealous that Michelin man himself had more goals than me. Maybe it's because I saw the man get married to a Brazilian girl, something I could only dream of. Maybe it's because I couldn't figure out how his body composition works. And maybe, just maybe, it's because I didn't want to hear Debbie's voice again. <laughs> But the ultimate reason was I forgot. I forgot that he existed. And then people reminded me and I was like, oh yeah, I should do another one on Cult. So here we are, 90 Day Fiance Cult Part 2. And this time, he's back and better than ever. I should have said back and fatter than ever. I'm sorry, but he is. One night, baby, is on anybody on Cult yeah, so we're going to be talking about Colt from 90 Day Fiancé, the one who everybody thinks is constantly cosplaying as a croissant, and the question that we all have lingering on our minds, how does this man actually pull so many chicks? I, to this day, don't get it, but here I am waving the black flag because I need to learn from this man. Clearly, he's doing something right. In fact, he's doing something so right. He has another Brazilian girlfriend in this episode, and her name is Jess. And yes, she is pretty cool. Before we start this video, if you'd like to subscribe, I want to do something new and have goal-related subscriber things. So if we get to 500,000, what I wanted to do was actually fly in all my friends from different parts of New Zealand so that we could all sit in one room and react to our old videos. Yes, I'm going to show you my old cringy videos if we get to 500,000. So you better subscribe while you're at it. Do follow me at Instagram at 16 Leo underscore Say hi to me Tell me if you like cult or big ed better because I don't know which one you want to see more But it's between those two. So let me know. Okay Ow Okay, without further ado, let's get into cult saga part two Colt's relationship with Jess We catch up with Colt on 90 Day Fiance doing half a push up and punching the air. What did the air do to you, bro? Why are you punching it so hard? Hey. Hey, mom. We also get an establishing shot showing Debbie still in Colt's life. And ironically, she's holding trash, which is what Colt is. My name is Colt. I'm 34 years old and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada with my mother, Debbie. My mother's my best friend and I love getting to spend time with her each and every day. See, now that's cute. Spending time with your mama. Cute. I like my mom. I like spending time with her. What's not cute is their relationship. It's creepy. He, he talks a bit uh, about his mom and his mom talks a bit uh, about him. Sometimes they're a little too close if you know what I'm saying. Like bread and butter. Looking good. Thank you. For the first time in a long time, I'm focusing on myself, trying to get more healthy and just really rebuild my life after my long and very complicated divorce. Ah yes, now we catch up with Colt and for any of you who haven't watched my last video, for shame, also watch it. Also, if you don't want to, that's completely fine. I was just playing. He's gonna recap his story. Three years ago, I met Larissa online. Just one second. <laughs> 90 Day Fiance does this when there is a person from a country other than America. They tend to stereotype the living sh out of them. As soon as Larissa came on, they had bossa nova music from Brazil. That's how they do it every time. Like if they had an Indian person, and they do have an Indian person, Summit, from 90 Day Fiance, as soon as he comes on, they're like, Yale Zolea! Whoa! Can you not just play a normal song? Do you have to play a country defining song? Bro. When I first met Larissa, I didn't speak any Portuguese, but after having spent five days with Larissa in person, I decided to bring her over to the United States on a K-1 fiancé visa. Problem number one. If you meet someone and you're like, damn, you sexy as hell. After five days, don't bring them over to your country and bring them a visa to live there. Why? Because it's stupid. Okay, continue. 90 days is not enough time to get to know someone, but I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Are you kidding me? He even dissed the show that he's on, he's like, 90 days is not enough time to actually get to know someone. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't say that? But I knew from the minute I met her, I loved her. Really? So I officially proposed with a ring. You know, as opposed to a microwave. Hello, uh, I've been saving this for a long time. It's 1200 watts. I feel like our relationship will get heated as fast as microwave, so you wanna marry me? And this is how he proposes, by the way. Normally people are like, I've known you for so long and you complete me. Will you marry me? Okay. Colt says this. Wanna get married? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> 
Want to get married? I get married. Want to get married? I get married. You want to get married? I get married. It's like a Yu-Gi-Oh battle. Want a duel? Larissa and I got into a fight and I was worried. So I called the police and she was arrested. It was difficult for me to decide to marry Larissa after she was arrested. Red flag number three, calling the popo on your wife. That's kind of like Bonnie and Clyde. Then you <laughs> call the cops on your on, on your wife. I thought you guys were partners in crime. Why is she in jail? Why'd you snitch on her? <laughs> Seems like a bad thing to do. But anyway, carry on, Colt. I really wanted to give her the benefit of doubt. I wanted us to try again and... I don't care anymore. I don't like you. Okay. I'm going to divorce you. Go bad. Go ahead. We're sort of speed running the past relationship just so that we get context. But yeah, Colt called the cops on his wife three times on different occasions, also decided to marry her, and then got drunk and decided to divorce her. It's kind of fair to say that Colt was the shitty one in the relationship, even though Larissa had her moments. I personally think Colt was a horrible husband. But here we are, months later, and he is lonely and orny again and trying to meet the girl of his dreams. It would be my one year wedding anniversary. Couldn't even make it a year. It's not your fault. I know. Let me stop uh, everything right there, and I just want to just quickly point out the toxicity of the relationship of Colt and Debbie is that they are able to say things like that. Debbie's like, listen, it wasn't your fault. And Colt is like, man, it should have been the one year. They confide in each other and usually blame the other people who are not in their circle and remove themselves from any ounce of blame and responsibility and once you take away from responsibility you can never learn therefore you can never improve and fix those mistakes debbie by protecting her son and saying nothing is wrong is actually kicking him in the proverbial balls because this dude is never going to learn to fend for himself if he constantly thinks other people are the problem he's the problem i just psychologized your ass that'll be 599 i have taken zero years of psychology i actually need one I think I'm ready to start dating again. No, 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 no. No. Oh. No. 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 Do you know who she sounds like? Have you seen the movie Get Out? There is one scene where the main character is like, uh, he says something and she looks at him and she's like, no, 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 no. And she starts crying. Oh, no, 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 no. But she still keeps saying, no, this is that. Oh, no, 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 no. If that was get out, this is get in. <laughs> He's not gonna make any good decisions. What my mother doesn't know is that I actually started dating again. Yeah, well, what TLC doesn't know is to censor this shit. Bro, if you're gonna censor some titties, can you censor Colts? What the hell? I was wearing clear glasses, now I need to wear glasses like this. I don't wanna see that. That's crazy. Please censor the cult next time, or give me warning, trigger warning, please. Thank you. Orange is little redhead, reach out to me, name Jess. Jess has a really good vibe about everything. She's fun, she likes to party. I'm excited to just be with her. So what happens is that Colt somehow is in Vegas and he meets another Brazilian girl called Jess, who even though she is Brazilian, is currently on au pair in Chicago. So she's a nanny in Chicago at the moment. And he somehow manages to meet her. I'm not sure how. This is the question that bugs me about Colt. I'm not saying that he's not a good looking guy. I'm not saying that he's not like capable of getting women. But realistically, honestly, what is it? What? I'm not jealous. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not jealous. I'm not. I'm not. not. Oh, hi, Mark. I'm not, I'm not jealous. I just want to know how he does it. I want, I want that. Okay, anyway, I don't get how he gets these women in his life, but good for him. Let's see how he f***s it up. I really need to see if this woman is the right one for me before I involve my mother in another possible heartbreak. I'm on my way to Chicago to see my new love interest, Jess. This will be my second time seeing her, but I definitely feel we have a connection already. 
So Colt meets Jess in Vegas, but she lives in Chicago. He then decides to go to Chicago to meet up with her without telling his mother, Debbie, because he's a 34 year old guy and he doesn't need to tell his mom where he's going. Jokes. <laughs> That's going to play into a big part of their relationship later because Colt needs to tell his mom literally every time he even thinks about taking a shit because Debbie needs to know everything. How are you? I'm very happy because you keep me. My name is Jess and I am 26 old. I like Code because Code is smart and funny and beautiful. Have beautiful eyes. What? I'm sorry, what? Can it Come again, please. Um, what? You say he's smart. I've never seen this man make one smart move in my life. I think if I took out a chessboard, he'd put food on it. What are you talking about smart? He's funny. Not only haven't I heard this man say a joke, I haven't heard him laugh at a joke. I don't think he understands humor as a concept. I think he goes to watch stand-up comedy and is like, that was a great Dave Chappelle documentary. Good stuff. Beautiful eyes, I'll give him that. He's got very nice eyes, but... This is the type of thing that people say when they don't actually have something to say about someone. Oh, he, oh he's smart. He's funny. He's interesting. He, he just makes me want to be myself. That's not true. It's his dong, isn't it? Just say it. Just say it. You like Brazil cult? Well, yes. I've only been married to one Brazilian, divorced, and now I'm dating you. In Brazil, the people kiss in the first date. Sometimes the first date. Would you like to come back to my hotel room so we can probably have some Uh, so I guess that's why these two like each other. Jess is like, hey, in, in Brazil, some people kiss, some people s in first date. Ooh. And Colt is like, yes, go on. But Colt is like a nice gentleman. So the one thing that I know about Colt is that he won't say anything like, you know, too crazy because he's, he's a decent guy. So he says this. Would you like to come back to my hotel room so we can probably have a hotel room? See? Decent guy. It's not a guarantee and I'm not gonna force you. But the door's locked. <laughs> uh, but it's open. Of course it's open. Like your legs. I'm, this is too easy. Like you. <laughs> but seriously, my dick is out. I can't blame him, honestly. If she wants it, you gotta give it to him. Her. Huh. Oops. Drink, go! <laughs> Just wants to go back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting, man. Yeah. That is capital D for disgusting. Why Why you make me see that 90 Day Fiance? Why you don't cut that out of the script? You edit so many things out. Why you leave those? Why you leave that in the script? Do I need to see Colt Bear kissing another girl? I never want to see that again. Thank you. Ninety Day Fiance. Thank you. I'm excited to get laid tonight. It's been a while. You're my girl. Please, please, girl. Can stop. Please, 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 please. Elmo say, f**k. F**king stop. <laughs> please. On the way to the hotel, Colt engages in a chat with Jess and then reveals that he hasn't told his mom about her. And he says that he's just going to visit friends, which Jess takes offense to. It's their second meeting. Jess shouldn't feel so entitled for him to say anything more, but Colt should have disclosed that earlier. Both of them are not seeing the imminent red flags in their toxic relationship that is about to unfold. And I feel like this deserves more communication. But just like Colt's food, it gets swept under the rug. Don't you worry. Last night, Jess was annoyed with me that I didn't tell my mother about her. So the next night, Colt comes in and he says that they sort of forgot about the whole thing. Because Colt actually took the time to talk about all of his issues and say that Debbie sometimes is controlling and that he needs to let go and be a bigger man so that he can have a more healthy relationship with Jess. And everything seems to be smoothed out. But once we got back to the hotel, she forgot about it pretty quickly. And we had seven. That's great. He doesn't say any of that. He bangs her. What? Have you learned nothing from me in the two years? Can you imagine if Colt actually turned over a new leaf? This man wouldn't turn over a new leaf unless food was under it. I mean, you kidding me? It's so beautiful here. Yeah, beautiful. Good day. As if that's gonna last, they go to a boat place in Chicago where Colt and Jess see the scenery and they both get to learn about each other's past. I have a question. <laughs> 
Have you dated anyone else in America? <laughs> yes. Have you? Six or seven. Ah, <laughs> look at his face. Can you see the pure excitement? Then turn to pure disappointment and then turn to anguish. Have you dated anyone else? I've dated a few guys in my life, but recently I've been letting loose. In fact, last week I let seven dudes clap these cheeks. What? Seven people? Just just the look of terror on this man's face, as if he thought he was the only person in the world to ever date this girl. Oh, come on, Colt. I'm jealous. You know what, Jess is saying this perfectly, but I'm also gonna take a moment to say royally fuck you. Are you kidding me? You known her for two and a half dates or something, and you're sitting there being like, I'm jealous. In your 26 years of living, you've dated people other than me before you even knew me? What a slut. What, really? You've been married before you knew her. That's such a hypocritical way to think. I hate when people do that. Here's my little advice. If you're dating someone, ideally, you'd be able to discuss your past even if it was bad and if you like the person enough you'd be able to forgive and forget and maybe it's none of your business what they did in the past and if it is and it truly bothers you leave Cole should have either been jealous and left or not been jealous and stayed don't have it both ways you like smashing that ass smashing that ass <laughs> you you like lobby toppy i like lobby toppy <laughs> Everybody like it. <laughs> when your eye hits the sky like a big pizza pie, that's your balls. Eh? <laughs> I like Swift Coat because I'm the boss in the bedroom. <laughs> and I slowed that down because that is one of the freakiest things I've ever seen in my life. I'm not really sure what she did there. I think that was her orgasm face, and I don't know if I can make it, but she sort of goes back, opens her mouth, and then <laughs> looks to the sky. Sort of like Harvey Two-Face. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I want to see that again, but hey, that's, that's, that's a face you don't want to see at nighttime in the bedroom. You think he's gonna come through the closet and scare you? Oh boy, how do I explain this? Uh, it's empty. I guess Colt does. Ooh. Anyway. What happened with your ex? My ex-wife was arrested three times. What? I wanted to break this one down. This one's a pretty serious one. So, if we look at Colt as a person, and I'm not trying to be a psychologist here, but I think this is pretty rudimentary, that is textbook manipulation. I'm not sure if anybody forgot, but he's the one who got his wife arrested. And he's like, my wife got arrested. Actually, bro, you drank and like cussed her out. She did not do anything back to you as far as we know. Nothing that was filmed. So it feels like that's a lie. But because Larissa's not there to tell her side of the story, Colt makes himself seem like the victim. Oh my gosh. She couldn't control her anxiety or anger. And I was so miserable. That victim culture that he portrays gets Jess to be like, ooh, I need to console you, I need to feel sympathy towards you, and then Colt wins her over by manipulating the ever-loving shit out of her. So, I'm so sorry the situation for you, because you're a good guy, good person. And... What a douchebag. It's 2021, it's almost 2022. People are gonna manipulate you. We're in this weird state of mind where everybody manipulates everyone and it's like, ah, oh, some relationships are just super toxic. You're gonna maybe run into that. And now that you can see how easy it is to do it, I would suggest avoiding it. Avoid cult at all costs. This is my last night in Chicago. So tonight, Jess and I go into a bar to meet Jess's Chicago friends and they just so happen to all be Brazilian. I want them all to like me. Manipulation example number two, this next one. Colt goes to meet Jess's friends at a bar and he exercises his right to manipulate the hell out of her in this exchange. Cheers. 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 Viva Brazil. Yeah, la, la, wa, bibo. What the hell did you say? Where are you from? I'm from Las Vegas. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Is she spazzing the fuck out? What is wrong with this woman's eye? Ooh, Vega! Oh, somebody called a NAS hospital. Ooh! Every time she hears Vegas, she just has flashbacks of when she played 21 and hit 28 and lost all the money. Oh. 
ele fala que não vai me, me machucar, ah. mas ele tem uma amiga dele que fica ligando pra ele o tempo inteiro. If you're dating someone and you're around a group of friends and they don't speak the native language, it would be really sad if you only spoke in that language. Diz ele que é amiga da academia. Desde quando ele foi pra academia? They're talking in front of him right next to him, which I, even if he's a douchebag, is still disrespectful. If I sat next to some people from... Russia, oh man, I was trying to think of a place, and they spoke in Russian, they're like, Hello, Leo, you are so nice and cute. And then they looked towards their friend, they're like, I'd be like, that's not even a language, bro, you're just being offensive. But if they actually spoke in Russian, I'd be kind of offended, because I'd be like, damn, bro, I'm right here, speaking your broken English. Let me ridicule you about that. It's kind of mean that they actually didn't just speak in English or confront him on things that they actually wanted to know about her friend. So. Code has a friend with Vanessa. Code told me not have nothing, it's just a friend. I've been friends with Vanessa since I was going through my divorce from Larissa. We started talking online about my troubled marriage and she was there to help me through it. So here is the big obstacle in their relationship. Colt met a friend called Vanessa. Is it okay to just have a friend who is a goal? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm just trying to bang everybody. Of course it's okay to have a friend. Platonicity is obviously okay. But I'm sure there's some level of attraction. I heard this study once and I think it's true. I may be wrong. But I think on some level, one person or the other has to have some form of attraction. It doesn't have to be more than friends. It just has to be like either admiration or attraction or something where it's like, hmm, <laughs> dope. And I think Colt has something like that with Vanessa because knowing Colt's track record, he doesn't just have friends to have friends. He has friends to have benefits. And I think I'm right about this. So just keep watching the video. Because you're going to see that. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Brazilian party? Yes, yeah, yeah. you need to go. That's a Brazilian dance and fuck. This is the part where I talk about manipulation again. Jess and her friends want to go out on the night to have some fun. A cult does not. And he's like, I'm tired. I want to go home and sleep and have Sloppy to be in the bed. I was going to say the butt, but I don't want to say that in front of your friends. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that. Honestly, I'm a little tired. I, I kind of want to just go back to the hotel. Girls. So Jess's friends are like, oh, don't be a buzzkill. And he's like, I can and I will be. And he actually guilt traps Jess into coming back into the hotel. I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm going to court in hotel, okay? Guilt trapping and manipulation. Two signs that you should not be in that relationship. I'm not sure if I got the full stamp of approval from Jess's friends, but... I felt great. Jess decided to come back with me to the hotel and I win. <laughs> Whenever someone says I win in a relationship, oh, the loser is the other person. <laughs> Relationships don't have winners and losers. They just have people who are trying to communicate. And if it's a win-lose relationship, everybody ends up losing. Advice from Leo. $2.99, you have to pay. It's non-negotiable, just send a check. You and I come first. Always. I come first. I come second. And first. And third. You disqualify yourself. I came. I already came. That's how a relationship works. I think God's cool, but God's boring and no respect woman. <laughs> sorry. sorry, I keep pausing, but that's a gold line. I think God's cool, but I also think he's disrespecting and he don't like women. <laughs> I think God's a good chef. But I also think he's useless at cooking and make Roy have all of his food. <laughs> I think Colt is best lifeguard ever. Except I don't think he can swim and last week he drowned in the shallow end. <laughs> okay. All right, contradict the error. The next yeah, day Colt and Jess talk about compromise. Colt does this. And doesn't change his face and then dances like the Michelin man on a step. Coming up, more problems for a trouble. Earthquake. Yep, We're having an earthquake. earthquake. I'm surprised that step didn't break, but turns out they're mending their relationship for the second time. In fact, they're doing it so much so that Jess says, What do you think about you go to Brazil with me? Me go with you to Brazil? She wants him to visit her family in Brazil. And Colt says yes. 
That's a good idea. You want me to go to Brazil? Yeah. <laughs> no. I would love to go to Brazil with you. Colt then tells Debbie that he's going to Brazil, and then she says this. I'm ready to start dealing with Jess, I guess. Hey. God. Hmm. Oh, yeah. No. Meanwhile, Larissa on Facebook sees that Colt is with a new woman and tries to call Jess and warn her that Colt is a really bad man. Hello, hello? This is Larissa. <laughs> She's got Colty Gal on the phone. She actually saved her number, which is weird. But anyway, this is a 90 Day Fiance special. I mean, they made these two talk in English, neither of their native language. Both of them can barely understand each other. Why would you do that? This is a broken conversation, but in the conversation, Larissa explains to Jess that Colt is a bad person. Why are you on the comment? I have some things to tell about Colt. Jessica, Colt is a demo. He turned into someone mean, you know? Jess doesn't seem to take it too well, but she keeps that in mind. I believe Colt's a good guy and good person. Colt's like a whale that's everyone look and feel, oh, he's so cute, that animal look, but he's very dangerous. <laughs> so it's not only me who sees Colt's body shape as the personification of a sperm whale, is it? Hey, Larissa said it. I just reset it. Another thing, have you ever met Debbie? No, I never met Debbie. Be careful, she's a wolf. Remember my words, okay? Ah. Just seems not to digest this information and just cuts the call, but she starts thinking about it. Meanwhile, Colt and Debbie prepare to go to Brazil. My mother and I are heading to Brazil next week. So we invite my friend Vanessa over for dinner. I told Jess I wouldn't talk to Vanessa anymore. Oh! Feels wrong to lie to Jess. Oh! But Vanessa is my best friend and she's been there a lot longer than Jess has. Oh! You and Vanessa have been more than just friends? I had sex with her? Yes. Sloppy toppy. Vanessa? She's just your friend. We're nothing more than friends. She's my best friend. I had sloppy toppy. With her? I put my pee pee in over JJ. She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, cray, cray. She said, what? I said, in the butt. She said, bust a nut. I said, what? She said, can you play Jack the Ripper? I said, bitch, I could be your stripper. She said, get the nail clipper. Really? Really? Who else did you have? Did you have Debbie? Really? How? <laughs> well, there goes that relationship. You can't recover from this one. Good luck telling Jess about this. Cole, we gotta go. Cole, are you ready? We have to get going. I want to see what their Walmart looks like. <laughs> should I just pack the bathing suit? You should. A Brazilian bikini? <laughs> yeah. No. Little Bombay's. <laughs> yeah, say it again. Say it again, Carl. Say that again. What your mom? You? Mm. Say it again, Carl. You want your mom to wear Brazilian bikini? Ugh. Why? Why on earth would you ever say that to your mother or any member of the family? Ugh. I imagine Debbie in a bikini. I don't want to see again. I get weird feelings and don't have a good feeling about it. Yes. Will you listen to me? I don't know, Mom. Everyone's gonna be saying, for God's sake, lady, let him live his life. <laughs> no. That is Debbie's problem. She is a controlling mother B word, F this and the B. All she does is control her one son because that's all she has. And I'm sure deep down, she just loves him and wants him to do well. But Debbie is stifling, and I mean stifling her son's ability to go out into the natural world and find someone he actually loves by being so overbearing. Debbie, you have to let go of your son, just like any mother bird, you have to let that chick fly. And in, in Colt's case, he might sink, but you still have to let him. Anyway, they go to Brazil and Colt and Jess meet, and uh, then this happens. <laughs> I can't wait to drop my mother off at a hotel or a pool or something and be alone with Jess. I can't wait to, to drop my mother off at a pool or a garbage place or, I don't know, maybe in space. Because <laughs> yeah, i seen Jess's titties. Oh my god. Forgot about those. Woo! Colt, why would you say this stuff? Ugh. I have you, Deb here, and me, it's my family, but I need a little time alone with Colt <laughs> for it. I hope she didn't hear that. 
Well, she's fucking right next to you. I'm pretty sure she would hear that, you dumbass. Also, Jess, could you be a little less disrespectful? I'm sorry, could you be more disrespectful? Is it even possible at this point? Ooh, sorry, Debbie. Yeah, how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. No, you just no, can't get into no. it because they would- It's time for Sloppy Toppy. With the cold tea. Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. Did you want to have turn after me? Sorry about that. I'm sorry about the accent. I'm also sorry about dropping the dog, but really. Jess, really? Here's, here's me, then you, then Debbie. She's within earshot. She's within ear. Do you know how earshot works? She's within it. Stop talking about having sloppy toppy next to the mother. Ugh. Hey kids, we've called to have names. Yeah? Yeah. We came up with names for our children one day. Debbie then gets bamboozled at the fact that Colt and Jess actually thought about names for their potential kids, and these are their names. Okay. If it's a boy, it'll be Dominic, and then if it's a girl, it'll be Katrina. I bet you can't tell who came up with those names. Katrina. Yeah? yeah. You like? You're talking about like children already. Oh, in the future. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. I am totally in shock. Cole's never mentioned that he wanted to have children. Not with you, Debbie. What the f Why'd you say it like that? I'm in kind of shock. Colt never said that he wanted kids. Debbie, stop being weird, you creepy Debbie. I know what she's trying to say. She never mentioned he wanted kids with Jess and that he's moving too fast because contrary to popular belief, Colt actually moves like a train in hyperspeed when he sees a goal he likes. Realistically, this dude is moving ultra fast. Debbie's just not exercising it in the healthiest manner where she's like, oh, could you please move a little slower? Slower. I think Jess might want to get pregnant so that she can get a green card and become a citizen and live happily ever after. Actually, Debbie, I think Jess might want to get pregnant so she can, I don't know, have a kid. Does a lot of Americans on 19th Day Fiance do this? They think that America is some sanctuary and sacred place where everybody who is not in America wants to come there just for that green card. And I'll admit, I love America. I think it's a great place. I would f***ing shit out of someone for a green card. But not like this, Debbie. I'm not going to have a kid just so that I could get to America. This is not America. Childish is not my Gambino. <laughs> And I have a dog on my head, okay? What do you what do you really want, Debbie? I can live in any country. I like my country, and I'm sure Jess likes her country. So maybe that's not the actual reason that she wants a kid. Maybe it's because she just likes your son. Is that so hard to believe? Yes. Come here. God. What? You're kidding, right? Why? What do you mean what? Colt? What do you mean why? Debbie is all of us right now. You think any of us wanna hear? <laughs> Do you think your mama, who's sitting in the back, wants to see you with someone? Ugh. Colt, get Debbie away before you do that stuff. You dirty, dirty, freaky pervert man. I really need to go lay down. I really, really do. Okay. My mother is embarrassing me right now. I love how he says his mom's embarrassing him right now. <coughs> you darling, you are the sunshine of my light. I want to spread the right? Mom! You're embarrassing me, bro. I really need to go lay down. I really... Get it together. Why don't you go back to where you came from in America? What a dick. Huh? Well, there's kind of two rooms. We have this bed, and then we have these two beds. I don't know what Colt was thinking when he only got one hotel room for the three of us. It's not a good thing. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking either, but I'd hate to think that he was thinking, you could listen, because I don't know, man. I wouldn't put it past Colt at this point. He probably got one room. He's like, man, I got one bed. I just, I guess we're all gonna have to sleep on it. You, me, and Jess. Debbie, Colt, Jess, all in one bed. You, Colt. Get another room. If you're gonna bang your girlfriend, put your mama in another room. This is simple mathematics. I, I can't believe I have to use a fake dog to explain maths to you. Ugh. I let mom sleep for a bit. No, I thought, hey, you I either sleep for five minutes or ten minutes now, or you can put me to hospital in about a half hour. Debbie then lashes out, and I don't like how the way she's doing it. I think it's really mean, and Debbie's being kind of a B word. Let's go. Let's go. For God's sake, it's been 30 hours but at the same time she did just see her son engage in something that she probably wasn't too happy about she's also sleeping in one bed next to them it's hot and it's her first time traveling so you know she's probably irritable and cult being an irritation doesn't really help that they're both kind of just getting in each other's way well, here. but that's fine yeah i just think 
Dirty, dirty pervert man. Dirty, dirty pervert man. <laughs> well, she's hard of hearing and she's tired, so she'll go to sleep for a while. Me and you, your mom, in the same room. Oh, nice. No, please. Oh, actually, for the third or fourth time, Colt doesn't even look shocked. He looks kind of into it. I don't want to be the bearer of bad or horrible news, but uh, as you were illustrating that, Colt was like, yeah. Debbie? Yeah. I guess, uh, yeah. Someone's got to get it. <laughs> I'm not sure this man has a, a normal relationship with his mother. It's a bit too close if you ask me. A bit too damn close. So, Jess, I wouldn't bring up those issues if I were you. Justin calls Colt a baby man. You baby man. That's not fair. How does that make me feel? Because she says that... Your mom come here just for check. Jess is good or no? Yeah. It's kind of immature that you brought your mom here just so that your mom can check me out. Colt just met Jess, so... You know, he's valid within bringing his mom to check about it. But at the same time, it's a vacation between the two lovebirds. Like, why would you bring your mom there? If I'm going on a date, my mom isn't a surprise guest. <laughs> she doesn't just appear and then get me the drinks menu. I find it just as weird as Jess does. But anyway, Colt goes back into the hotel and meets up with Debbie and is like, sorry for last night. I woke up and nobody was there. We got a new room. I'm actually very happy that you and Jess decided to get your own room because it would be very, very awkward for me to be in one room and you guys in the other room. Smashing that ass. Or whatever you... I'm thankful too because Jess is pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. So, that's that. I'm meeting Jess's family today and I'm really nervous. I hope they all like me and my mother. Today is the day Colt meets Jess's family and as soon as she walks in, she's like... Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. woo! That is a great way to meet family. I just love the Brazilian culture. I love South American culture in general. It's pretty close to South African culture, and I just love how festive everyone is and how inviting they are. So that's pretty cool. Bella ficar com minha filha e tem que ser um passo me casar com ela, não fazer só de brincadeira. You love me or you use me for it? Larissa, I have a new girlfriend. It's a Brazilian girl. So what do you want? Colt then gives into the pressure as soon as they get to dinner. Jess is like, what do you really want with me? And he takes a second and his voice breaks and he's like, I want a family with you. I want a family with your daughter. And I fell in love with her immediately. I think your daughter is the best person I've ever met. I want a family with you. Ever since I met you five days ago, I just... I don't want to use a condom. <laughs> So already he's committing to wanting to start a family with this woman that he barely even knows. I don't even think he knows her f***ing last name at this point. And he wants a family with her. This man is moving entirely too fast. And the only person who can stop it is Debbie. My dad say you good boy for me. So you marry me here in the house. That's not good. Debbie, sick him. Sick em, Debbie. So does anyone else besides me think that they're moving too fast? Two months too fast talking about marriage and babies. No, I do, Debbie. I do. I'm on your side for this, oddly enough. I think that you do have some rationale and some sense, and I'm on your side. I'm waving the American flag. You just can't see it. I don't care. But you don't really know each other. Think about cold me for years, not just for two months. You haven't known him for years. <laughs> yeah, but it's that feeling. No, that's stupid. That's so, so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm on Debbie's side 100%. You can't say that you've had the feeling for yours. It's just you talking out of your ass. Don't you think you oh, should spend no, no, more no, no, time no, no, together? No, I different. Let's not I'll compare Larissa. You're comparing me no, and Larissa. No, I'm yes, talking about any yes. relationship. Mm -hmm. No, any relationship. No, you say now. It you compare. Okay, Colt, now would be a good time to intervene between the two ladies. You know, they're, they're talking all, all over each other. Now now would be a good time to be like, uh. Colt time! Debbie, shut the hell up! Jess, nice titties, but shut the hell up! Uh, uh, Jess's father, also nice titties. You don't speak English, so you don't get it. <laughs> Jess's auntie, call me jokes. Shut the hell up! It would be nice if he could step in and actually say something instead of just sitting there and looking stupid. Oh, I'm about ready to leave. Baby, 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 baby! 
Listen. Don't put your hand on my Why? face. Don't do that. Why? I mean, the fact that Colt didn't stand up for either of them is just really, really telling of what kind of a character this man is. He's so passive when he needs to be, and passive-aggressive when he wants to say something mean to someone. The fact that this man can't stand up for anybody makes me lose any respect I have for him. Last night, my mother and I went to Jess's family's house, and we drank, and uh, I'm a little tired right now. Somehow, the next day, everything is okay. They find him looking like Einstein over there. I'm pretty sure the people at 90 Day Fiance fluffed up his hair, but he comes in looking like he hit a tornado and just starts eating food like a grizzly bear. I don't remember a lot of it. Yeah, I know. There was quite a bit of drinking going on. Bro, that cannot. That This is not how you sit. This, this leaning back style of... Hey, as you tell me about yourself, Debbie, how you doing, Debbie? Last night was pretty bad, huh? Come on, Cole, can you just sit the hell up? I was a little concerned about a few things. Oh, like what? Well, when Jess got very defensive. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well, Colt is clearly sourced out of his mind to the point he can't remember yesterday. She's like, you know, well, I, 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 was, I was pretty mad about yesterday, and Colt's like, Shut the hell up! This man is just zoned the hell out. I don't think you're getting through to him, Debbie, at all. He then leaves, and this is the day they're going back to America. So before Colt leaves, instead of going back home, he asks Jess's dad if he could marry Jess. You're doing Come on, Della. And his dad is like, yeah, hell yeah. Because both of them are stupid. <laughs> so what were you and Jess's dad talking about before we left? Oh, uh, you know, just guy stuff, football, stuff like that. Yeah? Football? Yeah. Football? Yeah, Colt. That's as big a lie as you talking about you defying gravity to him. Are you kidding me? You talk about sports? You don't even look like you know what shape a ball is, bro. You kidding? Who's your favorite NBA player? Wayne Gretzky? Get out of here. I don't know if I believe that or not. Go Debbie! If Colt asked Jess's father for his, her hand in marriage, that's a terrible mistake. Debbie's gonna sabotage, Debbie's gonna sabotage. And I'm gonna do everything in my power to stop it. Go Debbie, go Debbie, don't sabotage that bit. You gonna sabotage that bit. Go fuck your life up for your kid. Mm, go Debbie, go Debbie, go fuck your life up for your kid. Mm. Colt, Jess and I just got to San Paulo. Hi. Well, I met Jess. Yeah, how is she? Um, seemed to be in a little hurry about maybe her getting married. Why is up her rush for her to get married? Her visa is up in six months. Mm, no, something's up there. I, I don't trust that. No. If it's a bad relationship, I will do everything in my power to sabotage his relationship. Debbie. Everybody needs a mother like Debbie. She is the literal definition of mother because every time she walks in, you're like, Mother oh. Debbie, why would you do that every single time? Debbie's trying to sabotage her own son. Half so that maybe she could save him from a failed relationship. The other half, probably because she could have him all to herself. Half selfish, half mother-like. A mother Hey. Hey, you guys look really nice. So then Colt and Jess come in and they're like, Debbie, do you want to go get drinks with us? We're going to see the town. And Debbie's like, nah, 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 I can't see the town. But I'll tell you who I did see, Vanessa. I said, Vanessa told me the cats are really doing really well. And she sent me a picture. Of... Vanessa's watching the cats while we're gone. She's just watching the cats. And this prompts Jess to explode because Jess is like the Hulk. And every time she hears the words, Vanessa. She just turns green and starts, like, impaling people. You. When this is a beat. Jess, come on. No, Yes. No, she's she, not. She's she, a uh -huh. good person. She's good person? Ah, oh, you, you she's biased. She's a really good person. Uh-huh. Good friend. Good friend. Good friend when we've caught. Uh-huh. Okay, we're in a weird position right now. We're in a weird position, like a 68. It's not quite getting f but... Uh, it is certainly in an awkward situation and uh, you got caught with your ding dong out. Uh -huh. What I mean by that is Jess is right because Colt and Vanessa did bang, but her working out is wrong. So she got the answer right, but the working out is completely wrong because I'm not sure that jealousy and that overly jealous trait is going to ever 
work for Jess. Being overly jealous about your partner, guy, girl, or other is not good. In the long run, it just causes many complications and it causes paranoia and sometimes, more often than not, the person who's paranoid ends up cheating and the person who they're paranoid about probably never does. So it's pretty crazy and mind-boggling and Jess is overdoing it with Vanessa but at the same time, her suspicion's right. I don't know what to say about that. Did you know Jess had an issue with Vanessa? Oh, there's that shit-eating grin by Debbie. That grin that's like, hello, I'd like a plate of crap. Ugh, Debbie's such a villain. If you're that jealous of him and not trusting him. You have a real problem, young lady. I think we have trust issues, guys. I don't know why. <laughs> that's like the office, that last shot. Debbie and Colt are like ganging up on Jess. And there's just a shot where the camera pulls back to see Colt sitting down. He is sitting so comfortably looking at his relationship get effectively destroyed by his mother and his overly jealous girlfriend and not having a care in the world. That is Colt for you. Sorry, I didn't know. I really did not know that she did not approve of Vanessa. I just did not think about it. I didn't know. Okay, well, Debbie, uh, you're a lot of things, but that acting is a pure zero out of ten. You you're about as convincing as Jackie Chan trying to play Wesley Snipes in a movie. This is not going to work. What are you talking about? I did not know. I had no idea. Oh my god, Colt, are you okay? I am sorry about that, bruh. Debbie, come on. Colton knows. It's obvious to me that my mother is trying to break up my relationship with Jess, but I love her. I can't really blame her because I lied about Vanessa. And I want to try to fix things. I'll be back. Damn. Uh, Colt figures out that his mom is trying to sabotage him, and as he leaves the room, his mom's like, damn it. Damn. But anyway, Jess is pretty annoyed, and she actually then talks to Vanessa, who confirms, yes, indeed, she has been talking to Colt, which sets Jess off. What? No. Oh, what the f Hey! Oh, what the f Oh, God. She's just... Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Colt could not be in the MMA at all. Like, even, even in self-defense, this man's like, Oh, God, you're ruining the suit, lady. Also, I don't care how angry you are, and I have to defend Colt here. I can't believe I'm doing it, but I have to. I don't give a f how angry you are. You will not throw things at a man. Nope. Don't ever think that is okay. I don't care about taking your heels off and throwing it at a man. Not okay in any sense. There is no, no reason whatsoever. I do not care how angry you are. That is a very, very big double standard, almost triple standard. And it's not okay to just brush that under the mat. That's a very wrong photo to do. You're freaking out. Stop! Hey, stop, stop it. it. Jess, come on. Stop it. You don't want to be I don't want to talk to you. Go! Stop it, Jess! Damn, I don't know if she's strong or cold, it's weak. But she pushed him and he was like, Oh, Jess! Cool. She pushed him, this is like a Marvel movie, he just flew the hell back. I don't want to talk to you! <laughs> Damn it, I don't know who's the strong one. Jesus! Where are you going? I went to my ex house because you trash. I'm allowed to have I friends. Now you here a lot. What? Yeah. Uh, again, I agree with Colt. What? I f cure you f alone? Sounds like the slogan for Nutella. <laughs> I got fun. Last day in Brazil, I got other men because you trash. I'm not trash. You trash. No trash because trash is better. You trash. No trash, trash better. You garbage. No garbage, garbage better. You cockroach. No cockroach, cockroach is better than you. I don't know why she took the time to like diss him and then double diss him. Oh my god, I have to defend Cole like three times in a row. It's not okay to say shit like that. Even if you're angry and you want to say something, don't say it now. Take some time, think about it, calm down before you say something you're gonna absolutely regret later. Because if I was in a relationship with Jess, I would be able to hold that against her forever. And not that I'd want to hold it against her, but how could you forget if someone you absolutely love says something like that? I'm going to bang my ex just to get back at you. Oh, get out of that toxicity. Get out of that Britney Spears toxic number one hit relationship, please. That is one of the worst things that you can ever say. And if Colt said that, you know how many people would be in the comments absolutely ridiculing him. This double standard is just too much for me. Jess is not a nice person either. It's just that Colt beats her out. Like he edges her out in the top position of like trash man. <laughs> Which he isn't because trash is too good for him. So why are you so angry? Why are you a violent person? 
Okay. Saying you're gonna go, do go. All this stuff you will die man. alone, not alone. I love you. I was gonna marry you. I was gonna propose to you. Just then gets into a cab and goes off as Colt breaks down. He's like, I love you. I was gonna marry you. Oh. And then he does something that when I saw it the first time, I honestly could not stop laughing. He leans against a building. And I don't know why he leans the way he does, but he puts like a weird pressure on it and his leg is back. And it looks like he's trying to push the walls apart. <laughs> Jesus in hell! Can you warn me, 90 Day Fiance? Can you put some pixelation on those thighs? Woo! That is a thickness! My mother and I are leaving Brazil today, and I have to talk to Jess and see where our relationship is. You want to talk about last night? Yes, please. The next day after thinking about things, Colton just finally decide to talk things out. And it's really good because they both are very level-headed people. They listen to each other and I think you know where I'm going with this, but nothing at all like what I just said happens. Why are you lying? Why you lie to me? Why'd you throw shoes at me? Why you throw a shoe at me? Cold, you lie all the time. Tell me you're gonna go an ex? Why you say you're gonna bang an ex? I say because you lie for me about Vanessa and I'm really angry. Why you make me angry? That makes you feel better? That's what you wanna feel? You How you feel like that? Yes, I, I just talk about Makes for you jails. Shut the hell up! Nobody's actually listening. It's just two people screaming at each other and talking loudly. Ugh. I know you sleep with other men. I respect you. You respect okay. me because you throw shoes at me? Yeah, I respect you. I try really hard. I try, I try. I try, no, I try. I try, you I try, 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 I have to go back to America. This is like Nikocado and Orlan. In another life, Colt could have joined Nikocado and Orlan, and they could have made a traveling circus with the three of them. Really? Can you guys mature the hell up? And this is it? You want to break up? I'm not in a relationship with her. Yeah, because this... I think I better my face, my bond. Sloppy toppy. It's better. One of the greatest toxicities of a relationship, fixing it with sex. And I know, out of everyone, I shouldn't probably be saying this, but let's be honest. Is that really fixing a long-term problem and solution? I know in the moment it sorts everything out, but I think in the long term it doesn't because without the communication, it just sweeps something under the rug only for it to happen again and again. And actually might get you to jail more than it bails you out. Ask R. Kelly. Just ask him. Me, yeah. You can't. He's in jail. I'm fighting for my life. Hopefully, after everything, we can just say we're even and trying to move on with our lives. Yeah, yeah, maybe the tooth fairy will come and suck you off and then maybe give you a million dollars the next time you chip a tooth, huh? Huh? How about that, Colt? Maybe you'll wake up and you'll have six packs of abs. You'll be like Zac Efron in Baywatch. How about that, Colt? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Colt. Guess what, buddy? That's not gonna happen if you don't actually sort your problems out. Colt and Jess then leave with Debbie back to the airport to go back to America, and Debbie looks shell-shocked oh, wow. because she thinks that she got hey. rid of Jess, but go. clearly she didn't. Yeah. When I saw Jess this morning, I was very confused. I, I was confused too, Debbie. I was confused. Was we were both confused. She was completely out of line she last was. night with Colt and I. She was. And she has a lot of explaining and to And she do. does. Can you remember? Sure. Oh, baby. Don't propose, don't propose, don't propose. Don't propose. We need to meet your friends. Cole, we need good. to go. I guess we need to go. No. They then go back to America. We cut to maybe a few weeks or months later. I'm not sure. The 90 Day Fiance timeline is like the Marvel one. Can't understand it. Don't intend to. But Colt and... Jess have been living their relationship long distance and it's putting a strain on their relationship because they've been fighting nearly daily. Hey. Hey. How you doing? So I was thinking maybe you might want to come out to Las Vegas. Yeah, I need to see your cat. <laughs> and my friends? Your friends, great, but I don't want to be friends. So Colt then invites Jess to come to Vegas, but the problem is Colt's been hiding a secret. And just like M. Night Chagalamanawa, there's going to be a twist. I've been very sad about what has happened between Jess and I. And one of the times Jess and I broke up, I was lonely, so I started to talk to other women. And by talking to other women, he means dick pics. Why do you want to quote? And me and you and Elsa and Sheep? I have to come clean about the things I did. 
But if I told Jess over the phone, she would definitely break up with me. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. Yes, she would have broken up with you. But if she came there in person and you told her, then she would have broken up with you and also had to take a flight back to Brazil. So do the right thing. Like Spike Lee, do the right thing. Tell her over the phone. Let her know that she's wasting her time coming to a waste man like yourself. Just tell her. Also, if this was a we were on a break thing, I side with Ross on that. Yeah. Come at me. Come at me. If they were on a break and he was single, he can slang that dick to whoever he wants. I don't care. But if he's in a relationship, then it's completely wrong. I'm really excited for Jess to visit Las Vegas, but I have no idea how things will go. It's like unwrapping a condom. Can we add that to the list of things that you don't say to your mother or with your mother while she's sucking on some ice cream? Can, can, can we just make that really clear that he looks at Debbie and he's like, bro, Debbie, it's like unwrapping a condom, you know what I mean? And Debbie's like... <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would... So what's new with you and Jess? Well, so, in a relationship. <sighs> okay. I know we had our ups and downs in Brazil. More downs than up. I know we had our ups and downs in Brazil. More downs. More downs. Oh, damn. Yeah, Debbie. I don't think so. We have fun with our family. You know, yeah, it was one day. We talk. We have fun with our family. It was yeah, one day. day. Debbie. Because it's a big scene. Very big. There is a big temper tantrum. Yep. He comes back in the morning and says, I'm back, darling. Take me back. Please never do that again. But yes, Debbie's right. Debbie's right about everything. Go on, Debbie, go off. Well, it's not perfect behavior, but you know, I think she should come out here. Are you okay with that? I think we can try again in Vegas. All right. Are you going to tell Jess beforehand about Vanessa? You took your mom to a place called Lick. Who are you trying to date? Debbie, Vanessa, or Jess? You got all three. I don't know. I feel horrible because I actually have been keeping another thing from Jess. You're gonna wait and surprise her? The big news, M. Night Shyamalan, nom nom nom, twist number two. A few days after I returned from Brazil, Vanessa was having a hard time during her divorce and needed a place to stay. My mother invited her to stay with us. So Vanessa is now my roommate. Vanessa's living with Colt. And now he has two problems to tell Jess. Should he A, tell her over the phone, or B, wait for her to waste her time and come down so that he can have a never-ending fight with her? Please, please have a dream, my lord. Oh, okay, okay. The answer is B. Oh, well, the answer should be A, but it is B. I wouldn't wait till she travels 3,000 miles and unpacks and says, oh, by the way, Jess, uh, this is Vanessa and she lives here. <laughs> Even Debbie, being the cruel machine she is, has enough hindsight to be like, Yo, Colt, please tell her now and forever hold your peace than making her come all the way here. Please, Colt. The only time you ever make her come is when she's moving country. So, can you stop? Well, I know if I tell her over Skype, I think she'll break up with me. Well, then that's not love, is it? And Debbie's right. I agree with Debbie. Hey, what's up? Not much. Jess just landed in Las Vegas and she's on her way to see me. Have you told her about me yet? Not yet. Want some toast? I don't know. Who knows, maybe Jess and I can work things through. I'm really hoping I just see her and there's that moment. It's like you see each other and you don't care what happened between you or it's just like, oh, I remember all the good things. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I can win the lotto without buying a ticket. Oh wait, that's stupid. Carry on. Do you want to go inside? Yeah. I come to Vegas because I need to talk quote about relacionamento. Oh yes, the classic hello and an ship. Yes. A lot of girls send messages in social media for me, talk quote, and crazy conversation. Jess has found out that Colt has been slanging that ding dong on the internet. So today I went to talk quote in Paris. You look great. Like, really great. What exactly is bothering you right now? How's your d You sent a picture today? <laughs> she couldn't even hold it in. Uh, uh, you look great. <laughs> How's your dick? You sent picture today? I found it on phone. I found it. I found You see it? Look, it's black. I found <laughs> what are you talking about? 
Stop. Listen. In two weeks, you send for eight girls. What? God damn it. Can you teach me your goddamn tricks? I've never sent that many dong ding dong pics to eight people in two weeks. God damn it. How do you audition your turtle to that many turtle homes? Like, what? God. How many... How many hot dogs do you put between the buns, Colt? I need to know how you do it, because I am getting outplayed by a man who looks like he belongs in a Ghostbusters movie. I don't... I have a screenshot for eight girls. Do you want to see? I want to see. I want to know how he does it. I, 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 I'm envious. Screenshot, code talk it. Love girls and send pictures and nudies. And code say, good morning, my d And code say, for girls, I single. Do whatever you want. But when you're in a relationship and that's established that you don't want to do that, that's wrong. Oh, you blush. Uh-huh. Why? Okay. Good morning, my d How are you, my d Good night. Oh, I forget, my d <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ah. Colt, Colt looking like a wise old man there. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, Colt. If you're single, fine. If you're not, not fine. It's as simple as that. You and I have had some problems. Since Brazil, you and I have had a really odd experience. I feel like we're drifting apart. Look, you lie all the time. If you have problems, you need a doctor. If you really have a problem, maybe we can talk about it. Then please just go home and talk. I guess. Since Brazil, I don't know if you and I are in a relationship or not. So then Colt says, let's go home to talk about it, which I don't understand. I feel like them talking about it at the cafe was better. But hey, it's your wall, Colt. I'm just living in it. But then he does bring up one interesting point. He's like, I didn't know where we were or where we stood. And when two people don't know, that's when problems happen. Because you have to be very clear about your boundaries and where you are in any kind of relationship. I think that's important. And Colt and Jess not actually defining, discussing, and setting the boundaries and everything else leads to things like this. I said I cried. I cried too. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you care about that? I understand Jess is really pissed at me. I'm hoping that just the presence of my mother will calm her down. Has that ever f***ing happened, bro? Oh my god. Colt, you dumbass. Hey, Mom. Hi. We're here. Hey. Hello. Hello. It's good to see you again. <laughs> hey, hey. It's good to see you again. Grapes. As Brazil, they have like nothing to talk about. You're a really great actor. Hollywood needs a cult. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Hollywood needs a cult. No, cult, that's not a funny thing. She's about to go into a tirade. Don't laugh, bro. <laughs> She's about to rip you a new one. You love everybody. Just say hi. Good morning, my d I love you. I'm sorry for hurting you. I haven't been a very good boyfriend. There's something else I need to come clean about. So Vanessa moved in a few weeks ago. What? She moved in not very long ago. She needed a place to stay. She's in the third bedroom. What? She sleeps in the third bedroom. The fact that he elaborated his points is so funny at this time. Vanessa moved in. What? She moved into the house. What? Now she's staying here. What? She sleeps in the bedroom. What? When she's tired. What? She sleeps. What? In the bedroom. What? Are you stupid? <laughs> it's like Colt knows that he's never coming back from this. At this point, there's no coming back from this. So he added one comedic nugget in there, and I applaud him for it. Why she's live here? Look, Vanessa's a friend. No she's friend. a really good friend. He's not just friend. Because it's not normal. I just sent my d for everywhere girls, but I know that the girls live with me. Uh-huh. I born yesterday. You're not born yesterday. You're born quite a long time ago, actually. But she's right, man. She's right. She got you there. She got you. You did do it. So, she's not wrong. I'm not in love with Vanessa. You, always you bitch, man. Always you. Listen. I good boy, but no, you play Stop. with your woman. Stop, uh, you! I've never used you for anything. Then, Look. Okay, stop. I really feel sorry for her, in a way. I really do. 
but I think she brought all this on herself. Come on, Debbie. Can you just admit that Colt's been pretty horrible himself? Jess is no saint. I'll be the first one to admit that, but Colt was pretty bad too. Come on, admit it, Debbie. Your son is not an angel. If he was, heaven would be that much lower. Really, he's like a devil. Why you, you date with me? I should never have gotten in a relationship with you after Larissa, mm -hmm. but I fell in love with you. I love you. Colt ends the whole saga by saying bye to Jess, and Jess says that she's tired. He shows her the door, then goes to drink, and then leans back as if he died. <laughs> and that is how his saga with Jess ends. That's the last time they see each other, and it was a whirlwind romance based on banging. They moved way too fast without getting to know each other and expanding their flaws. What I mean by that is... Just because you're physically attracted to someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that your values line up. And if you really want to date someone and love someone and marry someone, I assume you want to be with them long term. So you're probably going to want to see out some of those flaws and see if it's something you want. Because in a relationship, like I always say, it's not to find someone who's perfect and has no flaws. It's never that. It's to find someone whose flaws that you're willing to accept and move on with because you love them so much that even if you have some hardship with them, it makes you stronger when you overcome them. Before I go, I do have one more surprise. Okay. Surprise! Debbie's dating, and I have a video coming up very soon. So brace yourself. Until then, I will see you guys. Take care. Thank you so much for staying and watching the video. I appreciate it. Please take care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one.